and today the paper I would like to present is simplified level decision in rate distortion optimized quantization. And this is the content I'm going to present today. So firstly, I would like to give a brief introduction about what is the rate distortion optimized quantization. So it is also called RDUQ, and it is generally a um, very efficient soft decision quantization tool for video coding area. And it tries to find out the optimum quantization level for each transform, for each transform coefficient based on a trade-off between the rate and distortion. And this RDUQ is claimed to provide around 3.4 to 5.7% of the coding gain. So in this process, the RDUQ will first divide the transform blocks into several 4x4 four four coefficient groups. And this figure shows the, how the transform block is divided into coefficient groups. So one of um, the reverse scan pattern are chosen from um, diagonal, horizontal, and vertical direction. And the diagonal direction is um, dominantly used and the vertical and horizontal direction will be used only for small blocks which are encoded using some specific intra-prediction modes. And each internal step inside RDUQ will be processed following the same scan order. And the RDUQ function basically consists of four internal steps. The scalar quantization SQ, level estimation LE, all zero CG checking AZCG, and the last non-zero location determination, LNZ. So firstly, RDUQ will calculate the scalar quantization level LSQ. The unquantized coefficient C will be divided by a quantization step size and then plus the round offset, which is one half here, and take the floor operation. And this level will be the input of the next step, which is level estimation. So in this step, for each transform coefficient, it will have its own level estimation candidates, depending on the LSQ value. When LSQ equals zero, there will be only one candidate, which is zero. And when LSQ equals two, there will be three candidates, zero, one, and two. When for all the other cases, there are three, two candidates, LSQ, and its value minus one. And in this step, um, the output is chosen from the candidates based on RD cost. So the level which has the smallest RD cost will be chosen as the output of this, this step. And this level estimation is processed um, looping inside a CG. So after all the levels are estimated inside one CG, the CG will go to the next step, which is all zero CG checking step. So it basically check whether to set one CG to all zero or not. And after all the CGs are checked inside the transform block, this whole transform block will go to the last non-zero location determination step. So in this step, it will find out the best location for the last non-zero coefficient for the whole transform block. Com by comparing the RD cost between two successive non-zero coefficients um, following the reverse scan pattern. And the right side shows the flow chart of this RDUQ process. And we can see after all the steps, we can get optimized levels inside one transform block after the whole RDUQ process. And this, those three yellow color steps, in those three steps, all the level decisions are based, made based on the RD cost. So which means the rate and distortion are calculated and the RD cost are calculated several times recursively for each transform block. So um, we tested the encoding time of three sequences encoding, encoded using HM16.15 with RDUQ2 turned on. And we compared it with the anchor, which is the same at HM with RDUQ off. And we can see that the RDUQ will increase the encoding time significantly. Which means the RDUQ demands very high computation and it also consumes a lot of time complexity. So it is very meaningful for us to design some simplified RDUQ scheme that we, that, with, that we can will not affect too much to the coding performance. So in this work, we target on designing a simplified level decision scheme for RDUQ. So firstly, we carried on some stati statistical analysis on the level change, and then we developed a level estimation bypass scheme 
and also we discussed to early terminate LNG step. So um, the input of the level estimation step is LSQ, and the output is the um, optimized LLE value. So we know that the level estimation process can achieve the coding efficiency only when the input and output are the different. So in order to understand this process more, more um, we, in order to have a better understanding of this process, we analyze the following conditional probability, which is the probability of level changed by level estimation process giving a particular input LSQ value. So this probability is calculated as the following formula, and here A denotes a particular LSQ value that we would like to analyze. And the test data used for this analysis are generated from sequence basketball drive with 17 frames encoded under the, com under the random access configuration. And um, we tested with four different cases of LSQ values, which is A equals one, two, three, and greater than three. And this table shows the conditional probability under different A values. <coughs> Sorry. And we can see that when A is increasing, the average conditional probability is decreasing. So especially we can see the last column. The average conditional probability is only 0 0.04 when A is greater than three, which means when the input value LSQ is greater than three, the level estimation stage is not tend to change the input value. <coughs> so it means this level estimation process can provide very limited coding gain when the LSQ is greater than three. So it motivated us maybe we can just bypass the level estimation process since it's not going to provide much coding gain. But there is one problem that we cannot simply just bypass this work, this process. That is because we calculate um, in the level estimation process, we calculated RD cost for each transform coefficient, but this RD cost will be later used in the later steps, like in the L0CG determination and also the LNZ step, we will use this RD cost again. So we cannot just simply just bypass this level estimation process. However, we noticed that this L0CG checking step is actually not applied to the top left CGs which is the CG with the DC coefficient. So this figure shows an example of the top left CG for an eight by eight transform block. And so in this kind of CGs, actually the RD cost calculated at the level estimation step will not be used at the all zero CG checking because we don't have this step in this kind of CG. So it the RD cost will be directly used in to decide the uh, last non-zero coefficient. And also, at the LNZ step, we know that the current level, if the current level being checked is greater than one, it will be directly set as the optimal LNZ without further checking for the next um, level in the uh, reverse scan pattern. So in this case, the RD cost will not, the calculation will not be calculated. So. Um, in this kind of top left CGs, um, when the input L LE level is greater than one, the RD cost calculation of the, in the LE step is not used again. And we know from the candidate list before that L LE e greater than one also corresponds to LSQ equals two. And from the previous page, we already observed that when LSQ is greater than three, the level estimation process provides really limited coding gain. So in this case, we proposed our level estimation bypass scheme, that we can bypass the level estimations step, this whole step, at the top left CGs when the LSQ is greater than three. And in this case, even if we skip the level estimation step, it will not affect to the other steps like the audio CG checking and LNZ. And moreover, we know that the four by four transform blocks per has only 16 coefficients. So which means to find out the best location of last non-zero, 
is not expected to provide much coding gain as the blo larger block size. So in order to understand the behavior of this LNZ step better, we try to count the number of level changes by this step. And we denote this number of changes as n change. So we count this n change in each 4x4 transform blocks. And this figure shows an example of n change equals 3. So basically, three levels are changed after the LNZ step. So the um, last non-zero coefficient is changed from this location to the top left, top left location. So this n change also represents the number of RD cost comparison in the, in the LNZ step. And um, the test data for this analysis are also generated um, similarly as the previous analysis, but we use one more sequences kimono here. This page shows the histogram of level change and change in 4x4 transform blocks. So we can see that um, the end change peaks at being 1 and 2. And we still have a little bit amount when n change equals 3, but for the other cases, it's mostly there, uh, there will be no change. So we can conclude that in most of the cases, LNZ process is, expect, is not expected to change more than three levels. So from our observation, we are motivated to early terminate the LNZ process. So in our pro we propose to consider only the first four non-zero levels as the possible LNZ. So this is an example like only those yellow colored levels are considered as the possible LNZ. So in this case, we will consider only this four levels. So we will have um, the RD cost calculation and comparison only between those levels. So we, will, we can have at most four times of RD cost calculation and three times of RD cost comparison and three times of level change. So we will not che uh, check the RD cost or RD cost calculation comparison for all the other levels. In this case, we can reduce the quantization time cost by this step. So our experiments are carried on using HEVC reference software, HM16.15. And the sequences are tested from common test conditions with four different QP values. And to evaluate our performance, we um, tested our proposed method against the anchor, which is original HM16.15 with RDUQ2 turned on. And we also evaluate the BD BR performance and average time saving. This table shows the performance comparison of our proposed method against our anchor. And we tested with two different configurations, AI main and RA main. So under the AI main configuration, we can see that the RDUQ of um, suffers from around 4.44% of the BDBR loss, but if we can, if we um, implement our level estimation bypass process, we do not have, we almost do not have any B loss in B BDBR sense. So we, we have only a little loss like 0 0.02 and 0 0.01 in class D, but we can see in class E and F, we can even achieve a little bit better than the anchor, and, but we still have like 4.01% of the time saving. And similarly, under the random access configuration, the RDQ of suffers from 5% of BDBR loss. But our level estimation bypass scheme can achieve almost no BDBR change. But we can still have 3.6% of the time saving. And we can further choose to improve the time saving ability by combining our Level estimation, level estimation bypass scheme with early LNZ termination. So we can have a little bit um, better uh, performance in the time saving. So here's the conclusion. 
The RDUQ can achieve very high coding efficiency, but with very huge computation. So in our paper, we propose two methods to speed up the RDUQ process based on the statistical analysis on the level change. So our simplified level decision scheme can reduce the processing time with a negligible BDBR difference. Thank you, everyone.